It's fine. It's great. Um, but now one of the most important factors is, okay, this is a shared account. That's awesome. But what about 2FA? As a lot of times shared accounts don't have 2FA enabled, which is unfortunate because sometimes those shared accounts have incredibly powerful capabilities. Usually they're an admin account of some form and that's why they are shared, but not, but enabling 2FA oftentimes breaks uh, the login experience. So you usually have either people not using 2FA or doing the very classic yelling down the hallway for the authenticator code or frantically finding whoever had, whoever's phone number this is associated with. In this case, I can have 2FA enabled with any account I'd like. So for instance, go to my monday.com account and I'm able to use my, autofill my username and my password and the 2FA token shows up in the top right. I'm gonna copy it, but it also just autofilled it for me and I can just log in. And this does work with probably one of the most popular services out there. Like if I wanna to go to office.com, I have a shared account or an admin account or whatever I need to log into. I can of course show up here, use this, drop this in. And you'll also notice that there's a domain change right here. Went from microsoftonline.com to live.com. I do have multiple domains associated with that password. So now I can go here and see I have lots of domains. So that way, if it does go across the same credentials, go across multiple sites, I can use it on there as well. 2FA token log me in. And there we go. I'm now logged into any account. Anybody that has the, the this account shared with them, they also have the 2FA token. This behavior is identical for all of them. And you can control the permissions for this, revoke access. And the beauty is if a user is deprovisioned or removed from your instance or simply suspended, and you don't want them to have access to this stuff, these permissions are immediately synced. And if they're completely deprovisioned, they're, all of their um, accounts and their actual sub setup of the password manager is nuked. So they no longer have the data stored locally and it just shows up like a completely blank app and their access has been revoked. So you've been able to revoke both SSO by deprovisioning their user, but also removing access to the password accounts that they've set up, which has been that nice stop gap because not everything, let's face it, not everything um, is compatible with SSO, especially those line of business apps you've probably built your company around. Uh, not every single one of them supports SSO. So this definitely gives you that signed up similar SSO experience. They only need to know their PIN um, and this could be on a jump cloud protected device or they can even be, it can even be protected by their jump cloud uh, accounts and their credentials and MFA associated with that. But when this device um, is nuked and they have their jump cloud access revoked, they lose SSO capabilities and also their passwords. So you really can help lock down um, and, pr and protect your businesses by with both password manager and SSO being enabled. And that more or less is uh, the extension. The other important part I do wanna make sure I highlight, we do give you an easy route to bring over items from other password managers. So for instance, I can come in here and bring in items. So if it's been exported, typically it's been to a CSV or an Excel sheet, but a lot of these other services out here, we're able to handle the exported files from them. And I can simply I come in here, click this, and I'm able to select my files. So I can easily bring in my password from another password manager without really any kind of headache. Just come right in. The hardest part will be exporting it. So other than that, that's pretty much it. Cool. Please subscribe and check out more content from us.